As I see it, the church membership is declining today. More and more, the church membership is declining. People are turning away from their Christian teachings today. The very survival of Christian churches depends on traditional people today. Because many of our people are going back to traditional ways. Even the non-Indian people are not going back to church anymore. But they prefer to go out here on the highways and hitchhike to California and hitchhike to Connecticut and Canada. And they begin to travel all over, searching for something, looking for something. Our young people are hungry for something that Papa could not provide for them. And Papa don't understand why Junior has grown his hair long. Papa don't know why Junior is running around barefooted with his shirt off. But it so happens that I understand what they're doing. And this is why I became one of the spiritual advisors to the American Indian movement as well as many other movements, not only with the Indian people, but I began to go out and talk to the non-Indian people as well. And many of the universities that I have been to has no Indian students there. But the young people of today are very much interested in what I am talking about, and that is being a natural person, an ordinary human being. <coughs> because many years ago, Christian teachings separated that natural person separated him from the natural world. And people have drifted away from that natural way of life. Until now, everyone has become confused. So there are, there's an interest among this young generation to go back to the natural way and just be an ordinary person. I think that we have listened to the educated man long enough. We have listened to the professors long enough. We have went to school long enough. So it's time that we turn around and look at the grassroots people, the traditional people. Let's see what they have to say about our culture. We want to find out what kind of a teachings they can give us. After all, they are the ones that have lived that Indian life. No one ever had to tell us how to live. Life went on right here. As I said, we had a government that's thousands of years old, and it was workable for us. And we lived here and had to depend on no nations at all. We had never had to go to Cuba or Africa or anywhere else. Life went on right here without depending on any other country. We heard about the 200-year bicentennial, the celebration of 200-year-old baby, as we see it. Because a 200-year-old baby could not walk by itself. So somebody had to hold its hands up that this 200-year-old baby would walk. And that someone had to be Saudi Arabia and many other countries that had to help this baby walk. But we're still yet proud to say that in the thousand year history of our people, we never had to depend on no other nation for survival. For that reason, we'll be having this conference to bring out what is valuable to us, what, what made us survive. How do we get back to being independent? To be sovereign, we must be self-sufficient and not so dependent. These are some of the discussions that will no doubt be brought out. Culture is a way of life. We had no need for no one to tell us how to live. We had a way of life, and there was nothing wrong with it. We have plans made for us ever since the days when they begin to make treaties with our ancestors. They begin to tell us how to live and how to act and what to do. 
There have been many, many laws made through Congress, reorganization acts, and so on, to better the lives of the Indian people. But these plans were not made by the Indians. The plans were made by someone who has never even seen an Indian in Washington somewhere. The plans that was made for the Indians have all failed miserably. None of them has been workable. Even to this day, many different tribes have tried to use these programs. They have tried to use these reorganization acts, and it's still not working. Many of the programs that are available for us, to me, there is no future in them. So I feel like that times come that we have to sit down and make our own plans. And see, the government will not deal with us on spiritual basis. Many times our Indian people feel like that, uh, and they even say that uh, we're going to beat him at his own game. But we're forgetting that we're in his ball field, and he's changing the rules right in the middle of the ball game. So we're going, uh, as, as far as we're concerned as elders in our council, we're going to deal with the government on a spiritual basis because they will not deal with us, but they don't know how to handle it. We don't approach the government as a good Republican or Democrat. We're not going to approach him as a Catholic or Protestant. We're going to approach him as American Indians, having our culture, having our identity, having our spiritual beliefs as we have. And with this, I would say that according to the prophecies of our people, that the Indian people will emerge. Eventually they will overcome because they have the understanding of survival. And if necessary, I would say that this civilization is coming to an end in which no courts of this country have no control over. Such as the BIA takeover of 72, in which I was involved in it. When we took over the Bureau of Indian Affairs in 1972, we reminded this country that we have a treaty, 371 treaties with the United States government in which everyone has been violated. That our treaty was that as long as the sun rises and as long as the river flows and the grass grows, this is our understanding among all native people. And we reminded this country that this is the kind of treaty that we made with them which was ignored by President Nixon and many others. On the day I left Washington after the takeover, it was raining on that day. And in that year, Mississippi River was out of its banks, causing the U.S. Treasury millions of dollars. While we were in the B Bureau of Indian Affairs, it was put out in the paper that we had done $2 million worth of damages there. But Mississippi River alone cost the U.S. Treasury more than $2 million. Missouri River was out of its banks. And this was recorded that uh, this, uh, this was a hidden record in the past hundred years. Why was this happening? Our native people are related to nature. When we reminded the Americans that we have a treaty, it was ignored. But these two rivers that did all these damages only backed up our statement that the river still flows. And then repeatedly we have said that there are certain forces that the government does not control. It doesn't take the act of Congress to make it rain. It doesn't take the act of Congress to make it snow. And we know as native people that the earth is becoming unbalanced because the prophets of our people told us that many years ago, that this was going to happen.